Today, we're chatting with the brilliant mind behind DateLeon.com, a 24-year-old entrepreneur who used a billboard and his marketing skills to completely bypass the usual dating apps and separate himself from the pack in an unforgettable way. Don't you change that dial or drop that phone. We're about to level it up and shatter the mold. Question. In a world where groupthink is the norm, others want what you've earned, and thinking for yourself will get a target painted on your back, how do you flip the script and level up your business, your money, relationships, your health, your status, and your life? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Andrew S. Kaplan, and it's time to shatter the mold. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Shattered the Mold. Andrew S. Kaplan, really excited for today's episode. We're just about a minute or two away from talking with Leon Hendricks, who is going to give us some awesome stories and awesome marketing insights. But before we get there, obviously, of course, I want to make sure just to give you my quick update on how the last Law of Attraction book you'll ever need to read is doing. A uh, quick thank you, as always, to all the people that just left these awesome five-star reviews for me. In fact, if you check out Amazon right now, you'll see that I'm way past 500 ratings, and that's just on the U.S. site. So really, we're talking about hundreds of five-star reviews and really past 1,000 ratings worldwide, and I could not be more excited and more grateful for all the awesome readers and all the awesome feedback. And also, obviously, I'm pumped for the YouTube channel that's supporting that, um, Andrew Cap and uh, obviously, that one has been growing fast also. We are just on the cusp of 600 subscribers right now. In fact, uh, by the time you hear this episode, we will most likely have passed that already. And again, uh, I'm just so glad that people have received the content and the material so well. I'm so glad of all the cool success stories and cool results that I'm hearing out of people. And uh, just overall, the, the, the direction that this is taking and the forward momentum has just got me overjoyed. So thanks everyone for your support. Thanks everyone who checked out the book and checked out the YouTube channel. And trust me when I say there's way more to come. And um, if you haven't checked out the book yet now, uh, maybe today's the day to do so. But with that said, we're wasting no more time. We are diving straight into our featured interview of the day. I'm going to switch mics up and we're going to dive right into it. All right. So today's guest, uh, this is this is going to be an interesting one. I really love this. We, we got someone 24 years old. He's already built and sold his first business in e-commerce uh, back in 2018. And he recently moved to the U.S. to start a new business, which I'm sure we'll get into. But how this gentleman got on my radar screen is I, I saw in a Facebook post, um, he did the most innovative thing obviously during all the, the pandemic craziness of 2020, where he stepped up his dating app game, you might say, by bypassing the dating apps and basically putting up a billboard and setting up a website, dateleon.com, which, you know, for my audience, I know people listening out there, they could appreciate how innovative that is, but also the entrepreneurial spirit that goes behind that kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to say much more. I figure we'll, we'll hear it straight from the source. But with that said, Shatter the Mold warmly welcomes Mr. Leon Hendricks. Leon, thanks so much for being here, man, and welcome to Shatter the Mold. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to chat about this because uh, uh, a lot of thought has gone into it. And I'm glad now that it's, it's worked, that I can reveal the plan that I had and that it all worked. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I want to ask you about the plan, but you know I'm I'm not sh I'm not sure how many details you want to divulge about like what your whole concept was and and what you were hoping to accomplish. But I I could spot easily just in observing the website and taking a look. There there's obviously there there's more of an end game and there's a deeper insight because you were incentivizing people to to move forward, and that's regardless of whether this is about finding love or putting a spotlight on your business or both. And again, you're, you're the man to tell me if it is both or if it is one, and, and I, I defer to you on that, but I did really appreciate how something in retrospect, it seems so simple, but it's easy for me to say that after the fact. It's very easy to be a Monday morning quarterback and be like, oh yeah, billboard, duh, especially in times like this where the rates were probably down because you know there's fewer cars and things like that. But um, with that said, I mean, I'm sure this conversation will go in different directions. I'll, I'll open the floor to you. Like, what was the game plan? What were you hoping to achieve? And how happy are you with so far on, on what's been accomplished? So the media asked me about this because I had a reporter come to my house uh, last week as well. And uh, they basically asked me, hey, this is not just for dating, right? So basically, I've always had an idea to... Um, I've always had the idea to, to build a marketing funnel to meet women 
or just in general to automate things that just seem like a hassle. And, you know, the dating apps nowadays, nobody likes them. You know, it's very time consuming and they're not built for actually getting people into relationships or getting people into, yeah, into uh, the, the dating world. Because as soon as you're dating someone, they lose a customer. And um, I just realized how, how annoying it is. And, you know, I'm starting my second business here in, in the US. I'm going all in. I've, I've invested so much of my money into this. And I don't want to spend any time on, on social media apps or dating apps. And um, there was kind of like the choice of like, hey, I'll just not date at all for the next year or two until this thing is off the ground and I can delegate, I have money coming in and then I can spend more time on my relationships or there's a smart way that I can do this. And I've always thought about this and I thought, you know what? Yeah. What if, what if, is there some way to, to build a marketing funnel to actually meet women? And um, then basically as I was starting to, you know, start a, start a YouTube channel now um, I was thinking of good ideas for the specific niche that I'm in and just, uh, yeah, just cool projects that when people see the thumbnail and they see the t- title, they want to see it. They want to see what's happening. And um, I basically came up with that idea. First of all, I thought, hey, what if I make a video of me trying to build a funnel to, um, yeah, to, 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 to date someone, to get dates or to eventually find a girlfriend? Um, but I thought that's, that it's lacking a twist. It's lacking something special. It's like, you know, most people don't even know what a marketing funnel is unless you're in the marketing space. And I thought, what if I make it something more relatable? So then I thought a billboard, everyone knows what that is. It's a funny idea. And it's just, yeah, it would, it would not just be a great video, but I might actually, you know, I might actually meet someone. Uh, it's a crazy idea, but I thought, you know, I'll just go ahead with it. And on top of that, I also knew that, you know, I just moved to a new city, new country as well. Um, I'm trying to make connections here with entrepreneurs. And I knew that if I did that and I ex- executed well, then that would put me on the radar for some of the entrepreneurs that just think it's a funny idea and that want to get in touch. And that has totally worked as well. So I've really been yeah, hitting multiple birds with one stone. And um, yeah, you know, the, the, uh, the opportunity came up. There was a very, very cheap billboard that I found. Um, and I was like, okay, it's time. Let's do this. Life is short. And uh, yeah, I went ahead with it. And uh, long story short, it went viral and um, yeah, I had reporters come to my house. I had uh, multiple radio interviews. I've even appeared in a French newspaper, mm. <laughs> which, I, which I was surprised by. And um, yeah, I have uh, over 1000 applications on my website now to date me out of which most of them are not people that I would want to date, but I've had about, you know, 10 to 15 virtual dates scheduled now, which I'm currently doing every day from 5 to 8 p.m., hopping on phone calls with the ones that I think were interesting. And uh, actually on Sunday, I'm, uh, I've am i got a, another, a second date. So, um, yeah, we'll see where it takes me. <laughs> Sweet. So please stop me or correct me if I'm misrepresenting um, the situation here, but you know, on top of really finding an innovative, excuse me, an innovative way to, to find the right connection, you're basically, you found an innovative way to put your resume out there or to put your skill set out there as a demonstration of how creative you can be because people see you do this like, wow, okay, this is someone that doesn't just say they're creative. They're demonstrating it. They're demonstrating that they know how to go viral. They're demonstrating that they know how to think out of the side of the box. They're demonstrating that they can take different aspects and identify a, a need for an area of life like love or relationships and apply that. This is a demonstration. Again, obviously this is legit in that you are looking for love, but you, like you said, you're killing two birds with one stone here. You are demonstrating your ability, especially at a young age. Is, is that a, a fair way of, of what's part of the intentions here were? Yeah, exactly. I think, I think that's exactly what it does. And it also shows that, yeah, it shows that you're someone that, that likes, likes to do, you know, adventurous stuff. And, um, you know, people reach out to me, like I've had actually a couple of friends reach out to me that, you know, they, they actually told me, Hey, by the way, Leon, I, I don't think I ever told you this, or I might have, but I just want to say this again. Like, it's so cool to be friends with you because you're actually someone that does stupid things like that. <laughs> like the things that you hear about. And that, that was just, um, yeah, that was also a great reminder of, you know, just, just doing things like that that you know will create really fun stories later on 
when uh, when you have grandkids and you can tell them about the, the stupid things that you did when you were young. Right. Um, but yeah, also for for business connections, you know, um, it uh, it put my name on the radar and um, yeah, it, it got a lot of attention and attention is uh, it's an important and a, a powerful currency. Right. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you used the word stupid because I think we both know that it's not stupid, but we also <laughs> both know. Yeah. That And I'm bringing this up because we both know that there are naysayers. And part of the reason that people don't do, quote unquote, stupid things is often it's about they're worried what people will think of them. Like me right now, and I'm, I'm going to when I produce the video of this, I'm going to apologize to the audience because I've got my book on display right here. This isn't even a good way to display it. And there's a better way of doing it. But I'm in an experimentation mode of how am I going to display it when I'm doing interviews on podcasts to promote the book? So, and the only way I can do it is not if I do like a test run, but if I'm doing real stuff. So I admit, I, I look a little silly with this, especially like with all the reviews in the book and things like that. But no, 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 I have to do this. I can't think about the person that's gonna be like, dude, you've got like a blue block that's propping up a large printout of the thing. <laughs> like, I can't worry about that. Because when you worry about stuff like that, you're not just stopping money from coming in, you're throwing money out. So I wanted to acknowledge that, yeah, we're talking about stupid and I'm sure your friend was just saying that in a way he didn't mean it was stupid, but that is such a big thing that holds people back so much. And I wanted to give you credit and to some people, man, 24 is ancient, but to people like me, 24 is young and very young to understand that level of the game, to understand the level of like, I'm, I'm going to put myself out there, out on the limb and I don't care what, how it looks to certain people because that's not my market anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it's funny that you say that with the age thing. Cause I, I think uh, last night or the night before I actually realized I'm turning 25 soon and I'm like hyperventilating. Cause I'm like, Oh no, I'm getting old now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, of course, you know, it's my friends that I, I've got a lot of friends that are 10 years older than me and they just tell me like, dude, like, come on. But, um, yeah, back to the, the naysayers and the, 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 you know, the whole thing of, of people, uh, criticizing you. That's, that's been the biggest learning for me in this entire experience because i've never been out there on the internet like that uh where you know it just got shared and it got out of control because i was i posted it on friday me in front of the billboard with a text of like hey this is what i'm doing blah 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 and um of the weekend i went to the beach with my roommates to get away you know a bit of a vacation and then it started going viral and all of a sudden i saw my phone i got all these followers on Instagram, people commenting, and it kept picking up. It, it started piling up more and more quicker and quicker. And uh, what we saw really quickly was that most of the comments were very, very negative, And they were very, very mean. They, they were about my looks, trying to emasculate me, um, making fun of me, uh, and accusing me of some, some things that were really messed up, where it's, it's just, um, I kind of like, it didn't even affect me because I can't even take it personally because it's so outrageous, like things like, um, you know, I, I used to, I used the word women or ladies to like, say like, Hey, I'm looking for my, uh, for the lady that is going to be the one. And also in one instance or in multiple instances, I used the word girl. So I'm looking for my American dream girl. And then people accuse me of being a pedophile. Hey, why do you say girl? You pedophile. <laughs> and literally like, Hey, we need to report this guy and all that stuff. And, um, just things like, things like that. And I'm, I was just like, I was baffled by it. And everyone I knew in person, they told me, Hey, this is so cool and so funny, but everyone in the comments seemed to be outraged by it. And, Oh, this is, this is toxic. This guy's a narcissist and all that. They didn't get the joke behind it. And there's, there was just a funny, silly, funny and silly idea. And, um, it was an interesting experience because I had to wrap my mind around that, you know, while I was on the beach on the weekend where I was supposed to relax, I was like, okay, is this going to get out of control? Are there going to be articles written about me that I'm, you know, <laughs> that I'm a yep, really yep. bad character and I'm going to lose my visa, you know, all these things because it was out there. It was already out of control. Um, but I had to wrap my mind around it. And I realized that whenever I went on a profile of a person that was criticizing me like that, I always saw that those were people that were scared themselves to put themselves out there. They were usually not doing very well in life because I could see that their posts were usually negative. They were always criticizing something and always sharing something that they were outraged by. So that's, mm. that's the state that they were living in every day. 
And um, the moment I read those comments, I knew they were already on to the next thing. I knew they were already outraged by something else and they probably have already forgotten about me. And um, I haven't seen a single person or I haven't heard from a single person that whose opinion I respect because I know there's someone that puts themselves out there and they, they're, they're wise and they've, they've done things in life, in life that, that are challenging. I haven't seen one that actually criticized me for that. And um, that's one of the biggest learnings really that, yeah, the, the people that uh, criticize other people, they're usually only people that are just scared of putting themselves out there themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyone that has achieved something in their life or has not just achieved something, attempted something in their life and grew from it, maybe even failed, but decided to grow from it, they'll, they'll, they'll always cheer someone else on because they know they can do it themselves. And that's, that's probably been the biggest learning for me through this entire experience and what I, what I the, yeah, the biggest benefit I got from all of this, besides from all the attention and all that, really learning that. So um, I'm infinitely grateful for that experience. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm at peace with this now because at that moment it felt uh, like I was getting, <laughs> I was uh, getting ripped apart online. Yeah, you know, I, I heard you talking, as I hear you describing that, it, it kind of reminds me of something that I learned back in the day where it's like, you know, we are, regardless of, you know, what you believe spiritually or religion or anything like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's a pretty sound argument that we are genetically coded to want to fit in because there was some point in time where if you were kicked out of the tribe, you had to worry about saber tooth tiger coming and eating you with no protection. And you had to worry about hunting with no help. And I feel like that is still in us where being accepted by the group is such a big deal to us on, on a visceral level that reading comments like that, if you take them to heart, it can really tear you down because it equates to pain inside your brain. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that, believe it or not, that some of those comments were so ridiculous because I am making an assumption that that helped you get a quicker recognition that it wasn't personal. Whereas if they were closer to the mark about things that were technically true with, with like half-truths, I imagine that probably would have been way tougher for you to deal with and it would have stuck with you for a lot longer. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I, and I also know the importance of feedback. Like I'm not someone that's like, I don't like it when people say, oh, this is just haters because a lot of the people that say, Hey, this is just haters. It's like, no, maybe you should listen to them because they're actually making a good, a good point. Cause you're actually screwing up here and you, you know, you, you should think about improving that. You know, there's a lot of people that, especially in, in today's society that, yeah, that are narcissistic and they, they, uh, you know, they don't care about what anyone thinks, but you should, but only people that know you and that have an accurate picture of you. Because what I realized was that the people that criticized me, they just criticized the idea that they had of me. They weren't criticizing me because they didn't know me. If they knew me, we'd be friends. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been, that's been uh, one of the things that I've learned from this or one of the principles I took out of it, which is, yeah, if there's online hate, then they're usually just hating the idea of you. Yeah, very, very well said. So switching slight gears, um, I'm just going to be the, uh, the dickhead that asks. And if you don't want to answer, that's cool. I'm curious, man, how much did the billboard cost? <laughs> hmm. I haven't if you don't want to answer, it. that's cool. But I, I, would, I had to ask out of curiosity. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't revealed it yet because I knew that it, it would get people talking about it. And that means more engagement on Facebook. And that also means more reach. Mm-hmm. And it's just good to have a mystery. So I'm going to tell you that it's much cheaper than a very, very, very unreliable car that has been used for a long time. Cool. Hey. (laughs) And uh, yeah. (laughs) That's close enough. And I'm sure um, by the end of this, we'll we'll find, have ways of people learning more about you on the journey where you will reveal it. So even if it's not on this interview, people are going to find that out. But yeah, I I had to ask. And I, I'm like, I'm wondering, like, as I ask Leon this, like how many people already asked him this in all the interviews, but I just, I, I had to. Um, <laughs> so let me ask you this, like how much thought did you put into the actual design of the billboard itself? Uh, the design of the billboard, not that much, um, but the, the rest around it. So I wanted to figure out, okay, what's the angle that I'm going at? The first angle that I went at was like, Hey, like literally just me sitting in my room, you know, I, it was just like a 10 minute video of me t- talking about who I am, what I like, what are my 
strengths and also what are my flaws? What are my weaknesses? You know, you know, opening up about things like, Hey, I'm, you know, I, I don't put enough time into relationships cause I'm a bit of a workaholic sometimes, you know, things like that. That was the first angle that I went at, but then I thought that's, it's, I don't think that's, that's gonna, that's gonna fly that well because I don't know if I <laughs> should dive into that here, but one of the thing, one of the, one of the goals that I had for this year was to be much more open and honest when it comes to dating, when it comes to not honest, I wouldn't say honest. I wouldn't say, I would say become like an open book when it comes to more dating. vulnerable. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But also, yeah, not, not just vulnerable, but like just showing all of my cards. If I'm dating someone, it's like, Hey, Hey, this is who I am. And telling them exactly how much I like them. If I like them at all, if I'm, you know, uh, and things, things like that. And uh, just not playing any games. Mm. That's, that was my approach to, to online dating. Cause I'm like, Hey, I'm, starting to mature now. But one of the things I realized very quickly is that <laughs> I had no success with it. And I think uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, men have experienced something where they've, you know, they've, they've been the nice guy and it didn't really work. That doesn't mean that I wanted to be the bad guy, but what I realized is I shouldn't show all of my cards, not because I don't want to be open, but it's because in dating, the whole mystery thing works. The whole like, who is he? What is he doing? So the second angle that I went at was like talking about myself in the third person with a hiring, hiring a voiceover artist and like, here, this is Leon. He's done this. He's done that. It's like not, not showing my face in the video and stuff like that. And basically making it more, yeah, more, more like the, the, the bachelor from the show instead of like, Hey, this is me. Hey, nice to meet you. The second angle was kind of like, here, this, here's this young man. He's done this in his life. And this is what he's looking for. And it was just, there's just more mystery to it. Mm-hmm. And I knew that that would also get people talking because they would, they would talk about who is this guy? What is he doing? What is he all about? Um, and uh, I knew it would, it would be more controversial as well and therefore get the conversation going more. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where I put a lot of thought into what's the image that I'm putting out where I didn't want to put out, put out a, 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 um, a wrong image or a, an, a dishonest image, but just selectively picking certain things that also leave a mystery. So that's why I put a lot of thought into it. And when it came to the billboard, I thought it wouldn't be that important because the idea of the billboard itself, because the billboard just says, is, is my face pointing at a text where it says single question mark, date Leon, and then apply on dateleon.com. Just cool. the idea itself is like simple. And it's like, wait, what? So, and I knew that this would be enough to, to get the, get the ball rolling. You seem to intuitively identify like really strategic way regarding the billboard that I don't know if it was conscious or not, because I know you're an entrepreneur. So I'm sure you understand copywriting. You understand sales. You understand again, whether it was consciously or subconsciously, people are driving fast. They need something that they could read really quick. They need, you know, one flat image, not a bunch of, not stuff that they're going to have to stop and focus on because if they have to try too hard, they're just going to bypass it. It's like you knew this. But what really impresses me about like what you're describing here is because me, I, I like to think of myself as an intelligent guy. And I like to think that I can design really solid funnels with integrity. I mean, they're not cheating people. They're just legit funnels. And I also like to think that I understand how to accurately, like you want to, present myself in a dating scenario to hopefully give me a better match. But what you've been doing here, it seems like what you had to navigate was doing both at the same time, of designing a funnel and also keeping it in tune with the way that's going to result in you meeting the right person, which I don't know if you struggled with that or if you leaned in one versus the other. But to me, it's, it's, for me personally, it feels like an overwhelming thing, which is probably why I never would have thought to do a billboard. That's, that's, that was kind of the problem um, or the, the, the challenge, I would say, because I realized that I'm, I have different out- outcomes here. You know, when you have a yes. funnel, you have one outcome, you, whether you want to capture someone's email, you just want to get awareness or you want to get a customer ideally, right? That's, that's usually the, the go-to one because you know how much you can spend because you know how much your company is coming in. Um, with me, like you said, it was, there were different outcomes. The one was, you know, I want to attract women that I'm actually interested in. And the second one was, hey, I also want to get more attention to this 
because the more viral it goes, the more it gets shared around, the more controversy or mystery and all that, uh, the higher the chance of actually more people applying because more people see it and then actually meeting someone that is, that is a good fit. So I had to, yeah, I had to uh, juggle multiple balls and, you know, some, um, some criticized me of not putting up, putting out enough information about me because you're not telling us anything about yourself. Like what are, you know, what do you like? What are hobbies? All that stuff, you know? And I, I know that that's what you should do when it comes to dating, but when it comes to marketing, it would have diluted the message. So I had to make certain uh, yeah, restrictions there. Yeah. And by the way, it's easy for me to say this because I haven't done it, but in answer to that, what I probably would try, whether it works or not, is in the application process. I would reveal more about myself. Yeah, so it's like a true. thing like, you know, you've got the virility in the front end, but also when the girls are actually doing, it's like, I like long walks on a beach. Question for you is, would yeah. you like X, Y, like, and you know, maybe that's something that you can to modify it if you're not getting enough matches or whatever. Um, but, but yeah, and also I'm, I'm thinking as, as you're describing this to me, again, I have to give you full credit for this idea. Like me, I remember I've been so busy, you know, pushing, like trying to grow with my book and everything this year. I haven't even thought about that. And I personally don't like, virtual dating for me it's a thing of like i've got to be in person and until we get over this whole situation i'm just not going to worry about it but to your credit i mean i would say this <clears throat> when i was on the dating apps i often i'm like an over communicator and i i'm a wordsmith whether it's good or bad i, I i'd say a lot of words i had an idea one time of doing like a date andrew dot com type of thing yeah but it was never a thing like i'm going to put on a billboard and and show my marketing skills it's more of like a thing where i'd put that in the profile just as a hack so that i can write a lot of stuff and still have a um you know a hinge profile or a bumble or whatever it might yeah, be yeah yeah um but yeah but again i just and also i'm in new york by the way so i'd never even consider a billboard because oh my god but um <laughs> Yeah, I, I've, again, I've harped on this a lot, but I really do appreciate how you thought of this, but also I imagine this is also like a growing, evolving process. I mean, you're not changing the billboard, but you are, I'm sure, tweaking things and taking certain constructive criticism. And also now that there's attention, that, that changes the game. Like the fact that went viral, I imagine changes a certain game or certain strategy of how you're doing this. If I'm correct, by the, if I'm correct about that, can you confirm like one or two things that you've had to do since in response to it? Um, one thing that I had to add was asking for their location, what city they live in. Um, because I just had to start prioritizing because there were so many that applied from different countries or just different States or that, you know, they weren't even in Austin in Texas where I am. Um, mm -hmm. So I had, that's one of the things I had to prioritize. And then also adding some clarifications because some people weren't clear about certain things that I put into the campaign. How does this work? What about that? And uh, adding that, um, I definitely should have split tested more, but I just found myself so overwhelmed with the amount of messages I was getting, uh, the, the requests for media and all that stuff. So um, it was just too much at once. And I didn't actually end up split testing the, um, the, the headline or the video itself that was on the landing page. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Um, again, it's a, to play Monday morning quarterback. We're, we're This isn't live, so you're hearing this before I put this out there. So it's up to you whether you act on this idea, but I would suggest if you meet somebody and it works out, I would put a new billboard up on the same spot with you two together and maybe even buy the URL like I'm dating Leon or I dated Leon or something. <laughs> This I'm, I'm really telling you now before I upload this, man. So it's up to you if you want to grab those URLs. But I thought that that might be fun. Yeah. Know, a demonstration because people then will click on that and get the story. But but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Um, I've had similar ideas where, you know, maybe in the next month, uh, we're getting my buddy Aaron to do it. Where it's like, not interested in Leon question mark, date Aaron. <laughs> and <then it's> like, <laughs> you know, it would be a great follow up story for the media as well. It would get a lot of attention as well. And uh, it would be a fun ride. But this, I really like this idea because the media asked me to follow up with them if I actually end up uh, dating someone long term. Mm -hmm. But for now, I'm really just taking my time when it comes to, you know, meeting the people. And um, yeah, and, and before I enter into a committed exclusive relationship, it, it, it'll take me months of actually dating and, and uh, seeing if it, if it works. I, you know, I'm young. I like to take yeah. my time. So, yeah. and there's a certain integrity, like you don't want to fake it, you don't want to force it, because again, 
there was more than one purpose to this, but one of them was actually getting in a real relationship that will hopefully go long term for you. So, I mean, yeah. this might be a thing where a year from now, wouldn't that be cool if, I mean, if things go fast enough of like a year to the day, you could do it, but yeah, but it's not like people are paying attention to the synchronicity anyway. Um, yeah. Cool. So um, just to go there a little bit, I think you kind of mentioned a little, I, full disclosure for my audience, I'll have like a little chat with my guests before we go on. So sometimes I don't remember if we talked about something before the record button hit was or, or after, but um, I understand you're going on virtual dates now. Like, how are they going in general for you? So um, I've got, I've, I've had too many requests for that, for the virtual dates or just in general, me getting back to them and, and saying, hey, I like the answers that you gave. You seem interesting. I want to hop on a phone call. I actually set up a, a scheduling software where they just have to pick a spot. You know, they, they pick 20 minutes out of my calendar, <laughs> which all sounds really douchey and like, you know, sending them a link and I address that. So it's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've, I've had uh, about, yeah, about two to three phone calls every day for the past few days now, actually right after this podcast, I have three more calls and um, it's exhausting. <laughs> I bet, I have no doubt. It's, again, it's fun as well, but it's also exhausting because it's just, uh, you know, is, is there such a thing as, as dating burnout? <laughs> That's what I'm asking myself because it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a little awkward in the beginning, but then, you know, I'm, I'm good at keeping things light and just, you know, just keeping it easy going. And um, yeah, it's actually pretty fun. So some of the people I ended up talking with for 15 minutes and some of them for 45 minutes, cause it was just like, wow, she's, she's really cool, but she lives in Canada man, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, it's fun. So far it's fun. It's, uh, it's going well, but uh, the, the, pr the biggest problem I've faced so far is that most of them are not where I live and they're not even in the same state or not even in the same country. So I'm like, you know what? I, I, I like to travel, especially once the pandemic is over. Uh, I'll be traveling around again and you never know where things end up. So I like to think long-term, but for now it's just, it's just fun. Right. Right. Interesting. And again, like everyone has their own way. If, if I'm in your shoes, just because I'm so busy, I, I don't get to travel as much as I'd like. I would basically like be separating, like the people that are local would move to the front of the line without people knowing just because those are the ones you can meet in person. But yeah. Um, you know, the ones that want you that are out of town, they didn't hear me say that. So no one get angry at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, cool. So um, we were talking definitely before we hit the record button, but it sounds to me like you're also, you're doing some kind of documentation of this whole process, correct? Yeah. yeah. Tell me a little about that, please. So yeah, um, the idea basically came up because I was thinking of, uh, yeah, cool, cool projects for this new channel that I'm starting, which is basically all around doing things that, yeah, just that lead to a life of no regrets. Because while I was building my first business, and achieving all these goals that I'd ever set for myself, I wasn't really happy. You know, I, I had built this company, I had traveled to all these different countries and all that, but looking back at my life in those years, I regret those years. I didn't enjoy my life, even though everyone thought, hey, look, he's achieving all his goal, goals. He didn't even go to university, but he started his business immediately and all that stuff. And it's like, wow, so cool. And I'm like, yeah, it is, yeah, it is cool. But, you know, and there was always that, that, yeah, but, you know, um, and um, after selling that business, I committed to doing something that I really enjoy. And I realized that I need to do something with people and that has a deeper meaning to it. That's just who I am. That's just what I like doing. And I like, I like inspiring and I like having, having a, a meaningful message behind what I'm doing. Whereas my last business was just me sitting in front of the laptop and selling physical products online, you know, that I didn't care about. Um, it, it, it got me paid and it made a lot of money for me, but it wasn't fulfilling. So with this new channel, I was, I, I knew I wanted to do something that involves people. And I figured out that the, finally, after years of trying different things, that, that storytelling is something I really enjoy. And then basically this idea came up. Uh, I know I want to build this channel of doing things that lead to no regrets where I kind of, I want to combine storytelling, really powerful storytelling with um, personal development concepts because I'm so grateful for the people that got me into this whole personal development things and you can actually work on yourself and build a better life. And then from that entrepreneurship, 
that I want to be someone that, that makes that more accessible to, you know, pe- people that have not been open up to that world. And I think the best way to do that is through storytelling, through making fun videos or, or projects that are interesting to the public, but then infuse that personal development concept to it. So yeah, that's basically when I came up with that idea. Hey, what if that could be a cool video? Put that twist on it with the billboard. And now I've documented the whole thing from actually planning on doing it on this whiteboard right here mm-hmm. to then hopping on the phone, um, figuring out what billboard can I get and then uh, designing it, putting it on and the whole journey of getting, getting criticized for it, how I deal with it. And um, yeah, all the way up to the, the virtual dates. So um mm-hmm. And I guess the story doesn't end there. So, uh, I'm sorry, has the channel launched? Uh, yeah, so I've got one video out where I, I tried um, some uh, unconventional self-help methods and uh, basically documenting my journey of finding fo- more fulfillment in life. Uh, so that first video is up. And then the second video is just a trailer for this video that's coming up. Um, so it's going to be, I guess it's going to be a two-part series. Um, but for now, it's just going to be the, the, the journey that I've been at so far. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I've, I've got it all on video and I documented all of it because uh, it, <laughs> it's good to then show everyone what my experience has been because, uh, you know, you, you can just follow along. Cool. Um, I'll put the, you know, when this goes up on, on my YouTube channel, I'll put the link in there and I'll, I'll put the link on the site. But um, if people want to search, like what's the name of the channel for them to look on YouTube? For now, it's called Unregrettables. So it's kind of like The Incredibles, the movie, with the but just unregrettables so nice. things that you don't regret and um, i don't know if you can find it yet and uh by the time that people actually search for it it might the, might the name might have already changed but for now that's it cool all right well the link will be accurate either way so, so that's cool exactly um so and i'm i want to leave it open to you how you want to answer this question and it could be one thing it could be three things but i'm wondering based on this experience and what you've been through so far What's either one or two business lessons that you've brought into the process or one and two, one or two business lessons that you've like, uh, that you've learned from the process that you think my audience of entrepreneurs and free thinkers might appreciate hearing from you. Uh, so I touched on this before, but I would definitely say that, uh, any press is good press. Um, Cause that's one of the things that I was scared of, of bad press and, and having bad things written about me or bad comments. But in the end, those were the people that shared it the most by far. So out of the 2000 shares that it got on Facebook within a week, the majority of that was from people that were outraged by it, but then actually ended up creating more reach for me. And then actually got a lot of uh, women to apply because they, they saw it shared by those people. And, um, the yeah that that's that's really the biggest lesson do i have another one for now um not really i guess i guess this whole planning process paid off figuring out what's the yeah what's what's the angle that i'm going at and um yeah just being strategic about what you're doing figuring out okay for for example one of the ideas that i had was hey i want to get a billboard downtown that would have cost about five to six times as much as the billboard that I have. But I realized that, hey, I don't think that's necessary because most of the awareness is going to come from social media. So I can get mm-hmm. the, the cheapest one that I find, take a photo of it, spread it on social media, and I get the exact same outreach pretty much. So yeah. um, that's another thing, just being strategic, figuring out what works and um, yeah, preparing properly. And also I, I know that people will be able to listen back to this interview and, and hear the things like I... I sometimes try to cherry pick and highlight like the fact that there's a level of simplicity to the billboard and things like that. And also people can always go to dateleon.com and look at it, look at the execution, look at the style with which you deliver the content and the information. And, you know, hopefully intellectually without actually copying from you, but reverse engineered in the way that they can understand it and apply something else to their business in a creative and innovative way. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds good too. So just to get your perspective, because you have a little distance now on it in the sense of, you know, people tried to rake you over the calls. Like, you know, you got, you got, you know, trolled um, for lack of a better term. Is there a, um, either an aversion or even a want to be known as like the date Leon guy? Like, do you either like want to lean on that and leverage that? Or are you still concerned that that might be a thing that's stuck with you for a while? Um, I wouldn't want that to stick with me where, Hey, I'm that guy. But the idea is to 
to have bigger projects coming up that cover this up where that's just one of the many other things that I've, that I, I've done in my life. So um, I definitely don't want to be known at the, as that guy long-term for now. It's funny. Um, but it also gives me leverage to, uh, you know, to put, put out more, uh, tackle some bigger projects that I've happened in mind. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's leverage really. I, I wouldn't want to have that to be my, my thing. Cool. And just curious, I mean, I don't think we brought up yet. Like what's the name of your company that you're, or the agency or however you describe it, that you're operating through this specific project? Um, so the, the, the company that I came here to start in the U S started off as me wanting to, um, run events for entrepreneurs. The, 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 the name for that is collective ambition, but that's all put on hold for now Mm -hmm. because, um, because the pandemic and, uh, yeah, for now I've just been focusing on YouTube because I thought, Hey, now's the time to, to put out digital content because people are stuck at home they're watching stuff. And uh, I can't run events right now, physical events at least. Um, and that's, that was basically the, the only thing that I wanted to do, physical event, events of actually bringing people together physically. So yeah, now I've just switched everything to digital content and YouTube and um, yeah, also adjusting the target audience a little. Cool. Props to you for pivoting in the moment rather than just sitting on your hands. Yeah. I think that's a really huge thing choosing to bring up and uh last question i have for you and you know thank you for being so uh generous with your time and your insight and, and sharing this because i think there are so many lessons to learn from it um but yeah one question i have more for you is like if you can i know you're young at least i i think you know but if you can go back 10 years or any kind of period of time to your younger self and give them any advice what would you say to that leon <clears throat> i would <laughs> I think I would tell him what he probably will like. So I don't have to try to find my thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cause the past few years I've wasted so much time doing things that I, th- I thought I should like, but I didn't really like, but that's what I thought I should want. I wanted, I wanted to want these things, but I didn't actually, and actually coming back to the things that I've already always enjoyed, which is entertaining, telling stories and just, um, yeah, just also being someone that puts out a message that gets people thinking. So I think that's one of the things that I would do. Sweet. You know what I love about that answer? Based on this one conversation, that is such a Leon Hendricks answer. It's like, it's about that efficiency. <laughs> like, let me just like get this dude to the end so that he can get to the beginning of the next thing that he wants to do. I, I yes. love that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, this has been a, an awesome conversation. Leon, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for sharing your insight. And I uh, can't wait to see what people think of this one. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you again, Leon Hendricks, for that awesome interview and such awesome insights. Uh, guys, you know, this this is the level of quality that you can come to expect in future episodes. And obviously, it's there in all the other past interviews as well. So I hope you're digging the content. And if you haven't done so already, now might be the time to pull out your phone, hit that subscribe button, and leave a quick, honest, written review while you're at it. I really appreciate any of the feedback that I get about the podcast. And I'm really excited for more of the guests that I have on the way in the very near future. So stick around, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Thank you for listening to Shatter the Mold at www.shatterthemoldpodcast.com. My name is Andrew S. Kaplan. My name is Andrew S. Kaplan, and it's time to shatter the mold.